Welcome to Canon Conversation, our advanced Christian series. The last few uh, videos recorded have been on the uh, divine institutions that God gave. Number one, gave us a free will. So we had the ability to choose to believe God and uh, believe the gospel, be saved, or we can follow our sin nature. And when we follow our sin nature, it can end up uh, destroying to keep uh, society from being completely destroyed, God then set up three checks against the free will. That is marriage, family, and nationalism. And we've covered those three. Uh, we covered those last week. And so now what I wanted to do is talk about uh, once you're saved. Basically, those three checks of marriage, family, and nationalism were put in place by God to keep that sin nature in check. But in Christ, those distinctions are gone away. You, you don't need, I shouldn't say that they leave. I mean, if you're married, it doesn't mean you're not married anymore. If you have kids, it doesn't mean you don't have kids anymore. Or it doesn't mean you're a citizen of the United States anymore. But it's just the necessity for them has gone away in Christ. Because So you start off, why did you have marriage? Well, because when God made Adam, God gave him a mind. It has both the male and the female aspects of the mind in it. And he was incredibly smart at the time. But then God takes away the female part, puts it into a female body. So now Adam only has half a mind. His other half of mind is in the female body, and the two then become married. There's your first check, marriage. And in marriage, the two become one. So now you've got two different people, but they have to make one decision in total for, for the unit, for the, both the man and the woman together. And such shall have trouble in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 7 says that leads to all kinds of conflict. But notice it says such shall have trouble in the flesh. If I've got the male and the female part uh, all in one brain and I've got the sin nature, well then I'm going to use my greater intelligence to sin even more and end up destroying myself. So then God separated it out to where the female can provide the check on the male sin nature and the male can provide the check on the female sin nature. But we had to be dumb that way because now we've lost half our brain. So it's actually better if we've got a full brain but not choosing to sin. So when you are saved, you're taken out of Adam, you're placed into Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says we have the mind of Christ. Now the mind of Christ, I realize that Jesus was born male, male body parts, all that, a male body. But the way God designed it to be was that you'd have both the male and the female in one as long as you're following God. Now Jesus didn't have that sin nature Therefore, he didn't need that check. Now, we're not told in Scripture specifically that he had the male and the female together, but I believe that he did because when you read Galatians 3.28, it says that in Christ there is neither male nor female. So he must have had both in one. You can see him exhibiting things like that. You can see him, the male part, has that righteous indignation, that zeal, that zeal for God, and that he overthrew the tables of the money changers and says, you have made my father's house a house of prayer. You have made it into a den of thieves. The zeal of the Lord has eaten him up, the Bible says. So the, he uses the male part to take a stand for the Lord, to get rid of the evil that was going on in that temple. And, um, you know, saying that this is where God is to be worshipped, not where merchandise is to be sold. And then, so he does that with the 
uh, the male part, and in the female part, you can see him, the nurturing type a part, where he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, now that killest the prophets, how I would have liked to gather you as a hen gathers its chicks underneath its wings, and you would not let me. So there is the, the compassion, the female part there uh, of that brain, but then you also see the male part with the money changers. So God designed for you to have a whole brain, not a half a brain. But with the sin nature, you can only have half a brain because then it won't, it won't work correctly. Because then you just end up rebelling using both parts of the brain that come up with clever ways to, because the sin nature is deceitful above all things. So you'll just deceive yourselves into thinking that you're okay with God when you're really doing all kinds of wicked and evil stuff. And by the way, that's what's going on with the transgender thing. Is they're trying to overthrow God's check against marriage and to try to have the female and the male brains put into one. Jesus said a eunuch, which is basically someone who is sexless, uh, meaning they don't have that sexual drive, I should say. It says that eunuchs, Jesus said in Matthew 19, that eunuchs are either born that way or they're made of man by uh, made of uh, made that way by man or that they um, choose to be eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake and so you can think of the male and female like that too first off before um, with Adam he is born with both the male and the female so God takes away the option of when the sin nature comes, now you only have half a brain. You're the male brain or female brain. So he, the option of uh, being born that way with a full male or female brain together isn't there. But some people can do that for, uh, you know, because they're made that way by man. And that's what man is trying to do. Satan always tries to copy whatever God does. And so what's going on with the transgenders is it's saying, well, I was born a man, but I feel like a woman. And so then they try to train you to act like a woman, to live like a woman. They try to put chemicals in you to maybe have the estrogen and uh, the things that, you know, what, what makes a woman chemically operate. And then they can do sex change operations to make the, the physical look like it. So you could have the physical and the uh, and then the chemicals you could put in there. And so you're basically transforming this man into a woman or vice versa. And by doing so, what you're doing is you've already got, so let's say it was a man wanting to be a woman. So you've already got the male brain inside that person because that's where God made it, the way God made it. He didn't give him the female brain. But if they change the way it looks and then they try to put different chemicals in there and then they try to change the behavior, then it's like they're making that to be a female brain as well. So then you have both the male and the female in one and then that overthrows the marriage idea and it gets you back to the way Adam was, except it's all done with a sin nature, a man's way. Or you could do it the way God's way. And that's why Galatians 3.28 says there is, in Christ, there is neither male nor female. Now, before you are saved, all you have is your fleshly mind. Colossians 2 talks about the Colossians following that, that they were vainly puffed up by their fleshly mind. But then believers, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says that believers have the mind of Christ. So, in the mind of Christ, remember, he has both the male and the female together because he had no sin nature and he chose not to sin, therefore God gave him a whole brain. So he had the male part of overthrowing the money changers, he had the female part of uh, nurturing Jerusalem so that they may be saved. That both of those together, they're, you know, they're great godly uses of the mind. And that's why you know God wants you to have a full mind um, because then you have the greater capacity to serve, to serve the Lord. So in Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, now you have the mind of Christ. So you have your fleshly mind, which is if you're a man, you've got a male mind. If you're a female, you've got a female mind. And you try not to let the world change you as far as the chemicals and the operations and doing that transgender type of stuff. So, you know, trans means you, you're going across. It's not really a change in gender. Trans, you know, trans, like we use the term 
trans-dispensational. God is love. Well, that's trans-dispensational, meaning he is love in Israel's program. He is love in the mystery program. He is love in the dispensation of the fullness of times. He is love in every single dispensation. It's a trans-dispensational concept. So a transgender is something that encompasses all genders. Uh, so that both the male and the female, because there are only two. I know Facebook says there are 374, how many ever they say they are. Uh, but, but there are really only two. And so the transgender idea is to try to transcend both. But you've only got half a mind. You've, God only gave you either a male mind or a female mind. But in Christ, you see, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, Once we are saved, once we recognize our sin and trust in Jesus' death, bear on resurrection as atonement for our sin, then we are given the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ has both male and female because he never had a sin nature and he never chose to sin. So now he's got that full mind that he can use for the Lord. So you can see it sometimes in a message where I'll get all fired up and you know have that sort of that righteous indignation like Jesus had with the money changers of what religion does. But at the same time, I may be broken up and start tearing up over the love of the Lord and, and what he's done for me. So, uh, and the, the goodness of God. So you can see, when you use the mind of Christ, you can see both the male and the female working together. The compassion of the female, the, the righteous indignation of the, of the male working together. And that's why Galatians 3.28 says that in Christ there is neither male nor female. So again, it doesn't mean that you are no longer a man. You know, if, like for me, I'm a man, so... Um, if I was to be married, I should only be married to a woman. Um, I have in my fleshly mind, for when it comes to like my job, I've got to consider things, use that mind, that fleshly mind that God gave me to do, you know, take care of a, an occupation. Um, now, I can use the mind of Christ in terms of how I perform that, but as far as the technical aspects of it. You know, that's why when it comes to occupations, there's all this big push, you know, we got to get more women into science and to be engineers and mathematics. No, you don't. It's that God made the male mind a certain way and he made the female mind a certain way and that those minds are just go toward certain activities. The female mind is more detail oriented. The male mind is more laser focused on one task. The female mind can be the multitasker. So the vast majority of doctors are men, the vast majority of nurses are women because the doctor needs that laser sharp focus to focus on one little area to solve that problem whereas the nurse needs to take care of all the needs of the patient going on. And the, ma the female mind works great as a nurse, the male mind works great as a doctor and so we don't need more female doctors because that's not what they were made. I mean, you don't see them doing with that men. They don't have with men. Well, we meet, we meet, need more male waiter, wait, waiters. You know, why do we always have women serving people? We need to have men waiters. And we need to have men be nurses. Uh, and we need men to be teachers uh, in elementary school. No, you don't. <laughs> because the male mind doesn't work good that way. We need more male secretaries. No, we don't. I had to do that one time. I did a budget. I'm getting ready for a city council meeting. And I did all the calculations and all that worked great. But the secretary wasn't around, so then I had to make all the copies for the for the uh, city council meeting. I did a lousy job of that. I couldn't handle that stuff. You know, I could do all the complex calculations because my mind is laser sharp focused into one thing. But when it came to making copies and doing all that stuff, putting together these packets, I was terrible at that. I mean, I got it done eventually, but the secretary was much better than I was at that. I couldn't handle that because uh, it's multitasking and my mind doesn't work that way. So the male mind, when it comes to the occupations that you do, you're still going to use your mind, whether it's a male mind or a female mind. And because your job is, your mind is geared towards certain tasks. But when it comes to using the mind of Christ, you've got both the female and the male together. So you've got the spiritual, when it comes to the things of, of the Lord, the spiritual things. Well, you've got both the male, the righteous indignation, but you've also got the female part as to where you are, um, you know, compassionate for others, wanting them to be saved. 
and to come into the knowledge of the truth. So, in Christ then, because you're not following your sin nature, then the distinctions are taken away. But you still have your fleshly mind, so if you decide to use your sin nature and your flesh there, well, then you're not going to be you're not going to have that male and female mind together united against God because God only gave you a male mind or he only gave you a female mind. He didn't give you both. So your fleshly mind remains the same. So when it comes to your job, your occupation or things of taking care of the kids or whatever you do in the natural material world, uh, that doesn't change one bit when you're saved. When I got saved, I didn't, I wasn't suddenly a better accountant. You know, the, the skills that I had as an accountant, well, I was saved as a kid, so it doesn't really apply to me <laughs> so much, but uh, if you're saved as an adult, whatever occupation you're doing, you're not suddenly, uh, you don't suddenly have better skills to perform that job. And now, using the mind of Christ in there, um, the spiritual considerations, that you'll have that, that'll make you better, you know, that way. But as far as your uh, physical mind is concerned, your fleshly mind, that doesn't change one iota. So, uh, the, and that's a great thing when you think about it. So God takes, you're still in your vile flesh and you still have your fleshly mind. So then if you choose to walk by your sin nature, then you only have half a mind to do so. And you're limited by your physical body to, to do that. But if you... If you uh, decide to use the mind of Christ to do certain things, well now you've got both the male and the female part working for you, spiritually speaking. You're that whole person in Christ. That's why you are um, one, um, that in Christ you are, um, there's neither male nor female. So then when you ask about the second check, and so that's, again, that's why the transgender thing is such a big deal today, is because they are trying to create, God has, our, all believers have already been given a full male plus female mind, spiritually speaking, by having the mind of Christ. And you could do a lot more with a whole mind than you can with a half a mind. So then Satan, of course, sees all of this. He's in the spirit realm. And Satan it was perfect in wisdom and beauty when he was made. So he's a very smart um, individual. And so what Satan does is he tries to imitate or copy what God is doing. And that's what the whole transgender movement is all about. Because trans means a cross. And so it transcends it. It's not just one um, gender, but it can be both. And, but it's done, of course, not by the mind of Christ. It's done in the fleshly mind. So the transgender movement is Satan's way of trying to reverse the, what, of where God split up the male and the female minds into two different bodies. And it's trying to get that, it's trying to accomplish in a fleshly manner to get the mind to be both the male and the female. So if you've got a, a female mind and a female body, that's what God gives you. Well then, the transgender thing is, well, let's change the, have a sex change operation so that physically, now you'll look like a man and then, phys, and then um, take uh, chemicals to try to change the way you think too, how your mind operates. I mean, there, you know, back in the 60s, they had LSD and those things, they were called mind altering drugs. Well, that's what they try to do with the, was it uh, chemical, I don't know what they call it, but gender therapy, where they try to change how you think and you act. Um, and that's all about manipulating how the mind works with chemicals, with pills and things. And so then now you've got a, so you were born a woman, but now you look like a man because they change you physically. And then they have chemicals to alter you to, so that you try to, um, think and act like a a man and then they have you know things like you get those testosterone shots well now you so you can start growing facial hair you can start uh, you know doing those things and so now now they still haven't done the, the reproductive type thing I don't think anyway where a a person who was a man who wants to be a woman can now give birth I don't think that's possible yet but 
um, that's not really, and a reason probably that hasn't been done yet is because that's not what wants to be done. The idea is because they're trying to, what Satan is trying to do is go against the check of marriage and get somebody back to the way Adam was where he's got both the male and the female mind in one body but yet he uses it in rebellion with that sin nature without having the mind of Christ so then they can be a one person can be a lot smarter having both the female and the male brains into one body and uh, can use that in rebellion against God to completely destroy himself so the marriage idea is where the two become one and what what Satan is trying to do is he's trying to do where the one become two so God made you male or he made you female and so now you're trying to introduce the other gender into that same body and so then that would be united against God so that you could just completely destroy yourself basically by using your own free will to do all kinds of evil stuff and destroy mankind and that's what it's all about um, Satan himself is the first transgender because God made him according to Ezekiel 28 he was the anointed cherub that covereth now a cherub is a creature according to Ezekiel 1 that has four wings and it has four faces and uh, its job really is to protect the throne of God from any impurities coming in and so they can move as lightning can move fast the, then there's another creature that God made called an angel. Now an angel has zero wings in spite of what you see with pictures. There are no wings on an angel. And uh, they look more like a man. But they're a little, their glory is a little higher. They can do things in the supernatural realm, the spirit realm, as opposed to just the physical realm. And uh, like the man does. And Hebrews 1.14 says that angels are uh, ministers for man. Uh, ministers for those who would be heirs of salvation. Now the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 that Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. So God made him to be a cherub, made Lucifer as a cherub, but uh, Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. In other words, he's a transgender. He's not an, a cherub anymore as far as he is concerned, although that's how God made him. But he has tried to make himself into being an angel. And the reason is because an angel is a minister for those who would be heirs of salvation. So an angel's job is to help out man. But what Satan wants to do is be in control of man. So then he transforms himself into an angel to appear like he's trying to help us. But what he's really trying to do is have authority over us and control us. And so then that way he could try to overthrow uh, God's plan of uh, reconciling heaven and earth back to himself through man. And the only way God's going to reconcile heaven and earth back to himself through man is by having those free will checks again. The sins, the divine checks against the sin nature of marriage, family, and nationalism, which will keep man from uh, destroying himself so that as time goes on, a, a remnant from each generation can be saved and and eventually all heaven and all of earth can be reconciled back to God through those believers. So if you get rid of the three checks against the sin nature, marriage, family, and nationalism, well then you can't do that anymore. Uh, because now man will never recognize the sin because now he thinks he's God. So that's what transgenderism is all about, is trying to overthrow the check of marriage. And of course, if all that is in one body, when you chemically change everything, well, now you can't reproduce, so then you can't have families either. So we're out of time. We'll, we'll start here next time. Thanks for watching.